I am um, Kai Bia Kora Hini van Weg from the Horahokwa tribe, but I'm also part of the Western Cape Circle of Elders, uh, Royal Circle of Elders, which uh, house the Hesekwa, the Khainakwa, the Hohokwa, Horanaikwa, the Horikwa, the Otanikwa, and also the Atakwa. The Horanaikona are the descendants and deserters that broke away from the Horanaikwa. People must understand that. They are not a tribe. And this site is very important. As you know, since the 50s, our people has been dispossessed and relocated across the Cape Flats from areas like Musenberg, Newlands, Claremont, uh, Cape Town, and also the Akers, Elsie's River. They've been relocated into the ghettos that was created by the apartheid regime. But why the site is very important and those disposition that took place during that period of time was based on the apartheid lines, which separated us from the center of the city. So what I call the city, it is a donut city. It's got the commercial center, which is the center, is Cape Town, where our people used to stay in Seapoint, Bukap and, and District 6. So our people were removed out of the center of the city, the commercial body of the, of the city. And the second class people, the second class people were removed into areas like Welcome, and we also must understand that Sebran Park was never Sebran Park, it was Bukmakiri during that period of time. The sunny side, which is now Rondebosch East. So things have changed, but they've driven us, who are the economic drivers of this country, to stay in Mitchell's Plain and to spend massive amount of money on traveling costs to come to our place of work. That is what the apartheid is. It is unique in the whole world where apartheid has become legislation. And this legislation is still enforced by the local government and also by the provincial government. And why the site is important for me, personally for me, I believe that they are, we are trying to ensure that our people are integrated into these communities again. I mean, observatory was based many colored, our people stayed there. Salt River, our people stayed there. But they were all driven out through gentrification. And this is inclusion with the housing that we are bringing closer to the city and also to, to develop this one nation that we call South Africa. But the indigenous people has got specific interest in this part of, 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 of this land. And we understand that we did not build concrete jungles on anywhere. It was forced onto us. And today, people are complaining that we are breaking down the ecosystem. They never complained when we entered into the foreshore where many of our graves of different denominations right to Sea Point were basically excavated and built onto. And today they're making a big noise because we are claiming back what we've lost. And it's important for us that this must be the centerpiece for us to show our commitment and our dedication to our great ancestors who has lived under the yoke of the, of the many systems that we are, the Dutch, the, the, the Portuguese, the English, and we were driven out. We were denied our right 
as indigenous people. And up till today, we are not acknowledged by this government, which we contributed in the Western Cape in the liberation struggle. People like Colin Williams died for this. Ashley Creel died for this. Anton Franz died for this. Joe Marx died for this. And we are still fighting to ensure that our people are getting an equal share of the economy and not by anybody else. And Jody, who is part of the development for this part, are on the constraints of certain issues that we want to address because this is our land and we are the custodians of this land and we are saying that we want a rightful place in this development that will ensure that our seven generations will now will benefit.